once again, this is a long gospel. So I invite you to be seated, if you would, so you can have better ability to listen carefully, because there's so much said here this morning. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, in the village of Mary and her sister Martha. And Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. And so the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. And then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? And Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. And after saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. And the disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, it will be all right. And Jesus said, however, it had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go. Thomas, who was called the Twelve, said to the fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. And when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. <clears throat> Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives in me leaves in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And when she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and he's calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha met him. And the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going out to the tomb to weep there. And when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply and he said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of a blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward, and he said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The 
dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in the cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> focuses, of course, on Lazarus' death and his bringing back to life by Jesus. But it's interesting that Jesus doesn't call this a miracle. He calls it a sign. And when we think of a sign, we think of that which is in front of us that gives us information, or it, it says something about where you're going and what to look for. And I like that idea of pulling away just from the miracle, because that's the type of thing that brings people around, but it doesn't necessarily make them last in terms of who they follow, because people that we are, if one miracle is good, we like to have two, and then it multiplies over and over, and, and it's interesting in some of Jesus' travels where he goes to these towns, and they don't really want to listen to what he has to say. They say, show us something. Give us a side show. We like that. And so many times that is exactly how churches react today. Give me the big sign. But when it comes down to doing what you are called to do, well, that's a different story. Could you please give us another sign, please? And they're given over and over. And there's a big one that goes on here that almost goes unnoticed. Now, we look at this whole thing, and clearly Mary, Martha, Lazarus are close friends of Jesus. He's often stayed at their house. He's eaten with them. And it's clear he who you loved has died. And so he waits two days, which seems to be not normal. If you're really ill and you have a friend, you run as quickly as you can. But there's this hold back and the whole story evolving around Lazarus' death and how he finally comes and Mary and Martha come and say to him, had you been here, this wouldn't have happened, this tragedy. And he keeps saying over and over, and they say, well, we know he's going to be raised on the last day. And then comes that thunderbolt where Jesus says, I am the resurrection. That's who I am. And I am in your midst right now. So let's take a look at this differently. As I said in the beginning, that wonderful early Afro-American quote, people want to put a period at the end of death. God loves to put a comma, saying it's a sign. There's more to come. Listen up. I have more to tell you. And notice how he cries, how he weeps. Is he crying because Lazarus has died? Well, probably not, simply because he knows what he is about to do to give him his life back. So why is he crying? Is it the fact that this is the ultimate end that people see in each other? The fact that you live only to die? that you struggle, that you love only to lose? Or is it because he sees death as that ultimate enemy that sweeps us all away and he sees all of humanity before him? It's a very deep and moving thing because it says he cries deeply. And then he comes to the tomb. And Martha is very upfront about it. I wouldn't move that rock if I were you. He's been in there four days. And Jesus says, didn't I tell you that if you believed, you'd see the glory of God? And so they roll the stone away. And Jesus looks upward. And it all was in Joannine history, in the Gospel of John. He almost looks upward and he says, I give you thanks, O oh God. I give you thanks, O oh Lord. I knew that you always hear me. But now for the sake of those who are here, not just for me, but for those who are here so that they can believe that I've come in your name. I'm doing this not for me, but for you, and you know that, don't you? And then he cries out with that loud voice, and you can hear Lazarus come out. 
And the dead man comes out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth. And then, this almost glossed over little sentence. He says to the crowd that are there, unbind him and let him go. The sign that he makes, he now invites the people around to partake in what he has done. Unbind him and let him go. Jesus doesn't do it. He asks the people around him to do it. He invites them into what would be the resurrection of life and says, now I want you to be part of it. And it has been true throughout all of the centuries, throughout all of the ages, that the church has been invited into working with those signs that Jesus gives. And all through time, throughout Europe and the coming to America and sooner or later, the colony of Virginia is created and after a certain amount of time, somebody comes along here and starts St. Luke Lutheran Church and here we are. Are we not the people that are called to unbind and let people go? Those things that pull people down who think that life is no longer worth living, that somehow death is going to be the only triumph, that who they are is ended with the period after the word death. And we are here to remind people in what we say, what we do, what we sing, what we celebrate, there's a comma there now. And that is the story of a Lazarus, not the period at the end of the sentence, it is now a comma. And that is a gorgeous, beautiful thing to think about especially as we're working now toward Holy Week and next week, the Palm Sunday. In one moment, Jesus is triumphant and the next moment he's swept away by the powers to be, the whole thing turned upside down. And if there was anything to be said about Jesus at that moment, especially as we celebrate Holy Week, it is as if every power, Rome, all his enemies, all of those people who want him dead, said, whoever you are, Jesus, here is the period of the end of your name. That's it. But the resurrection of Lazarus is that sign of what is to come when, from what we celebrate in the eternalness of who Jesus is, he stamps a column instead. And so it is for those of us who cling to this Jesus, the punctuation has changed. Since coming here, I know and have gotten to know some of you people and what has happened in your past. And it occurred to me as I was reading this and pondering this, this wonderful comment that was found in the, the minister of a, of a black pastor from the South with that verse of no period, just a comment. And I was thinking about some of you people that I know. Um, I thought about you, Dave because I know of Crystal. And there's a comma after Crystal's name. Um, and Doreen is a comma after your son's name. There are commas all over the place. The event of Jesus changes punctuation in our lives forever. And it begins every time we read the story of Lazarus and says, this is what God is up to in our lives. Change the punctuation, folks. Just when you think that there is a period that ends who and what we are and why we take up time and space, God always trumps it with that pause, with that comma that says there's more to be said about who you are and I'm the one who's going to say it. And so, in the meantime, as people are all wrapped up and bound in those bands of cloth, wishing to be freed, not just for eternity, but for now, while we're still living and breathing, it's time for us to unwind the bands of each other's bondage, so that who and what we are now has a certain freedom to live and to breathe. We are a community that's called to come forth and unbind people and let them go 
so that they feel the freedom of what God has given them out of pure grace. So, next Sunday we wave our palms. We come in here and we sing all glory, law, and honor to you, O Karen of King. And all of a sudden we're plunged into what the world wanted to see as the period at the end of Jesus' name. Hang on. Because in the following week, all the punctuation is going to change. And if it changes for Jesus, then the promise is it changes for you too. It's good to know what punctuation is all about, isn't it? Especially when it becomes so critical in what we say and what we do and how we write. Looks like God is the grand exponent of what good grammar is all about when it comes to who we are and what we are bound for in our lives.